obsessed with the Sebastian Rogers case. So many things don't make sense. And I'm going to break down. And I'm going to give you my theory of what I believe happened. And I hope it didn't. I hope I'm wrong. But I guarantee I'm almost 100% sure what happened. So, autistic boy goes missing end of February. The father, Seth Rogers, completely believed him. He shows the kind of emotion... I would show. And he is, I mean, biting his tongue to not say what he really thinks about his ex-wife and her husband. Well, I come across a video yesterday of Nina Gomez, one of Chris's ex-wives, one of his ex-wives. I've read in a couple places he's been married five times. Five times. Huge red flags, right? So, all that to say, her video, Nina's also huge amounts of emotion. I mean, she's going through how she met him on a dating site, regrets it. She'd had two kids from a prior prior relationship, her first marriage. And um, she they get married, and of course, once you get with somebody for a while, you see the real them. But then it's too late. She gets pregnant with Faith. So Faith, when you hear people talk about Faith, that's who they're talking about. The baby that she has with Chris Proudfoot. He wanted her to have an abortion. And she, you know, went to her parents. What do you think? Parents are like, no. So she has the baby in the hospital. He's just showing his ass. And so much so that the nurses were going to throw him out if he didn't clean it up. I mean, he's like telling them what to do. He's he's raising his voice to to Nina. I'm believing you know, I'm sure she may not be 100% honest because everyone has their own version of events. Uh, Not that she's being dishonest, but maybe her version of what happened may be different, but I don't think it's a lot different because we all know a guy like him Unfortunately, ladies, most of us have dated a guy like that. That makes you try to feel like you're crazy. Well, she talks about when Katie was a little bit older. I think she's like seven now, maybe. uh, This Christmas, this past Christmas. So, Nina is taking Kate, or, sorry, Faith, to meet Katie at the airport. Katie's going to bring the baby, uh, the, the little girl, back to Tennessee to visit with the family. And, yeah, everything's fine. And Nina says something that really struck a nerve with me. That At first, I thought she meant Faith was recording. Because yeah, she says, because like she always does, nah, Katie is recording everything going on. And then, at that moment, comes a process server, you're being served light bulb goes off in Nina's head as it would mine of like oh shit you're gonna take my kid you're flying you're at the airport you're flying out of town will I ever see my kid again um so she's freaking out rightly so she's running back through the airport like she's trying to steal my baby y'all know she's trying to steal my baby which I get it I would have probably done the same thing and again Katie filming all of this and Nina says with a with a big smile on her face. That tells you a lot of what you need to know about Katie Proudfoot. And so Chris is just a piece of shit. So they were supposed to go to court earlier this year for this custody battle. And then Sebastian goes missing. Interesting timing, I'd have to say. Well, Sebastian's father, Seth, dropped a truth bomb and if it is true which it sounds like it is a whole nother layer so when Katie and Chris were living in California they let this I guess it was a 13 year old kid uh, yeah, the, the kid was older than Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian was about 7 come into the house you know, playing with Sebastian 
but they leave him alone. Like, Katie didn't check on him or anything. Come to find out, the boy molested Sebastian. Seth goes on to even say rapes Sebastian and says, like, he's not gotten any treatment for it. He, he really needs therapy, blah, 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 blah. Katie goes on blast yesterday saying, oh, yes, he did get therapy and, uh, you know, blah, 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 da, da, da. That's not what happened, da, 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 da. Well, Seth also says that Katie had let some man near Sebastian, a man, he got out of prison, but he was in prison for pedophilia. There is no way in the flipping world I would let anybody that I even suspected to be a pedophile near my kid. If I was there or not, no. No, 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 no. They can't be re rehabilitated. I don't care if he served prison and he got out. He can't be rehabilitated. It's, it's scientific fact. So, you got all that going on. Well, I told you about Faith, who's about seven now. Well, evidently Chris has issue with Sebastian because he's afraid Sebastian's going to be inappropriate with Faith continuing the cycle. So, he supposedly has been talking to Seth. They've been talking about uh, having Katie give up Sebastian full-time custody to Seth. One, if I heard my ex and my current are talking about me giving up my kid, I'd be pissed. Pissed. Yeah, Chris would be catching some hell. But, oh, it just, mm, it just gets better. So, he wants Sebastian out of the picture. They made reference multiple times of, yeah, he had a good day. So that tells me that maybe Sebastian's a little bit of a handful for her to, to take. And even Seth goes on to say, you know, he needs a schedule, da 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 So, obviously there's tension in the family. Chris bringing a lot of that tension. And then when you watch the interview with, I think it's the first one I saw of Katie and Chris. They're sitting and there's like the picture of Sebastian in the back behind them. They are like robots. No emotion. She's looking down constantly. And it, when she's going through the events of the day that happened that Sunday, at one point she's like, yeah, uh, I got a call to go pick up my niece. So I went over and then she looks at him kind of like for approval. And yeah, he nodded. Yeah. He nodded, yeah. Uh, and, oh my gosh, I don't know what this card's doing. And he nodded, yes. And I'm like, wow, you needed to get his approval. You needed him to make sure you were telling the story right. So, what I think happened, fast forward. I get no emotion. And then the next interview I see with a, a, a news reporter here in Nashville. Oh, she's all of a sudden got tears and she's crying. I would have been beside myself the first time I was interviewed. I would have been pleading with whoever was listening to please bring me my baby back. Bring my baby back. Uh, but she's not doing that. She's not using past tense that I've heard. So that's... Mm. But, okay my theory of what happened. If they have pinged the phones, I'd like to know if he was, in fact, Chris in Memphis at the time. And in, in the interview, there was an interview with Chris where he said he got on the phone with her about 9.43, 9.46. They talked for about three hours uh, he could hear her like trying to fall asleep and she's he's telling her to you know put the dogs up and go to bed and so they're on the phone for three hours you know how far Memphis is from here about three hours there's a video of like flash well three o'clock in the morning 310 there is a ring camera in a, a backyard like uh, 
shooting a common area and you see two white lights and they look like they come and they meet toward each other the first one goes back off screen like it's going back to that house and then the other one goes out of frame then it, it comes back and then the second one goes fast away from the house okay my thought she got frustrated with him I mean she gave him a big day according to what it sounded like I mean they went to BJ's which is in Rivergate uh, then they went to the bowling alley which I'm assuming was the Hendersonville bowling alley and then they went to uh, which there's two bowling alleys and then they went to Texas Roadhouse which is also Hendersonville in an area they call Indian Lake and her house is five miles from there or something like that not very far well she doesn't what she says is when they got home they put away groceries because he's a teenager and they had to have snacks she doesn't mention going to the store I've not heard but she's got these groceries she's got to put away but never once did she mention going to the store um, I'm thinking she got frustrated aggravated with him uh, I think she flew off the handle didn't mean to but I think she struck him I think he fell I think his head hit some furniture or something uh, I think it knocked him out I think she freaked out and then when she realized he was dead called Chris and that's why they were on the phone for three hours devising a plan and he's like don't do anything I'm on my way don't do anything till we get there don't go out the front door because we don't want ring cameras catching you I'm gonna park a street over so dogs tracked Sebastian sent to this construction area that's kind of behind the house but it disappears there according to one report I saw he either parked the road over or in that construction area I think he picked up the body ran put it in the vehicle took it and dumped the body now Chris's father lives in like almost Madison area Campbell Road East Campbell Road uh, I, don't, I don't think the father has anything to do with it the sister who allegedly spent that whole day this was the niece that, that, that uh, Katie talked about going to pick up so Chris's sister lives in White House and she went on her social media be just going on about like oh this you know why am I taking the blame for what a 15 year old boy did another post she goes on to say how yeah it was me me my niece my sister my sister-in-law and Sebastian so five people went to I I think I'm assuming BJ's uh, there is a waitress that testified say, or like that interviewed uh, saying that she waited on them at Texas Roadhouse but it was only Sebastian and Katie and even said that Sebastian got the salmon she can't remember what Katie got and that was about 6 ish 6 6 30 something like that so my question is did he ever make it home there's no proof that we know of that he even made it home but I think he did and I think something happened there uh, it seems like she, again she tried to give him a good day well the sister-in-law I mean she lives in White House and they're of course wooded areas between here and there but what's most interesting and I think most plausible if it wasn't the sister-in-law that helped I believe it was the mom and stepdad stepdad's name is Terry um, uh, box, uh, boxer something boxer uh, boxer Bowser socks Bowser socks uh, Terry Bax uh, Bowser socks senior and his uh, the mom of Chris is Lynn no I don't know it doesn't matter uh, Kathy Kathy so they live in Gallatin and it's interesting because both Melissa, the, the, Chris's sister, and Kathy, the, the mother, they both live about 15 miles away. 
Well, Terry and Kathy's house are almost at the end of this dead end road. It looks like a dead end road. And if you look, there's wooded area behind it. If you go even further, there's like, I don't know if it's a retention pond or what, but it looks like a body of muddy water if we're going by Google Maps. I'm thinking that's why you don't sense his smell. The dogs didn't sense it after that construction site. I believe he took the body out by his his mom's house and either went up into the woods or went over by that pond and that's where you're going to find the body. Could be at Melissa's and White House, but I'm going to bet it's in Gallatin. I hope that they've pink the freaking phones. I'm sure they have. I don't want to tell anyone how to do their job, but I don't have a lot of faith in Sumner County. I just don't. Having lived there a good chunk of my life, I, I have no faith in them. Uh, even Seth goes to say like he doesn't think they're doing all they need to and he wishes TBI would take over. I do too. I would love to know if they've gone in to the Proudfoot house specifically in his bedroom, Sebastian's, sprayed some luminol to see if there's any blood. Sprayed the vehicle's house to see if there's any blood. I also saw somewhere that there's a, uh, that someone says that the vehicle that Katie drives and the vehicle of Chris's parents are pretty much the same vehicle. So could that have gotten swapped out? I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't think, I think it, it was whatever vehicle Chris was in is what transported the body. And I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Sebastian's alive and well. But let's be honest. That's probably not the case. Uh, I, I wish that I was wrong about Riley Strain and I was right. Uh, sadly. But I think you're not going to... That's why you've not found any hide no hair of him near the house. Because Chris parked up a street or two over went through that backyard, retrieved the body, scurried back, and took off to a place he was familiar with to drop the body. We will find out soon enough. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but you mark my words. I'm going to try to uh, update this video later to show you maps and show you some of these social media posts, but... Again, thank you for listening to the Laugh or Die podcast.